welcome to the Botanist Garden Club. I'm Pam. And I'm Elka. And today ooh, we get to talk about plants, but we're also going to be talking about wildlife. Birds. In birds. In particular. Yes, the good kind of wildlife, I guess, if we're <laughs> thinking there's some wildlife we don't want to necessarily attract, attract. to our gardens. Mm -hmm. But birds, definitely. I love birds. I, I love bird song. There's one, you know, there's it's something such, about it. Yeah, I know. It's spring feeling. It's life. It's life in the, exactly. in the trees. I love going out into the garden on a quiet day and sometimes just sitting and listening to see if I can if I can hear any birds. And mm -hmm. when I do hear them, it just, I don't know, it just makes the whole being in the garden experience a, a wonderful thing. And of course, you know, we all love birds. I, I think most people do love <laughs> having birds in their garden and we want to be able to support them in yes, the garden. And, and more than ever, we do mm -hmm. need to get them back. I remember when I was in in Germany with uh, my mom and we realized that there's less and less birds. Yeah. So you really have to help them mm -hmm. to come back to your, right. to your yard. And there's really two easy ways that you can do that in your garden. One is to provide a safe, comfortable environment for them to be in. And then second would be able to, to provide them with natural food source mm -hmm. uh, that they can forage on, especially in you know late summer going into the fall. It's a very important time for birds to kind of fatten up for the winter. Um, now, when we're talking about creating an environment, it's, you know, that's a kind of important Well, we kind of have to start at the top, mm -hmm. and I, uh, I kind of like to do that anyways when it comes to creating a garden. You know, start always with the big stuff first. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially when you have a garden that has nothing in there. Yeah. You always go with the, with the big trees first, mm -hmm. but the, I always say bigger trees um, also attract bigger birds right. because they look for a solid, nice big tree f to make a nest and mm -hmm. have a nice little a home for the family mm -hmm. uh, and smaller birds can also land on the branches and right. they have their nests a little bit lower so right. bigger trees like I don't know evergreens you know yeah, like, like conifers or cedar, cedar trees. trees or pine trees those types of trees are really wonderful for birds because they can they're attracted to them they can make their nests in them they can hide in them which is of course we all know is very important for birds they want to feel safe exactly. and when planting if you're going to be planting new trees in your garden you know, try and think of a plan that looks natural. You know, not just sort of one tree, one tree, one tree. You want to, you know, try and do them in, in grouping. Something that you would see in a forest environment or something like that. It's more natural and it's more attractive for the birds. It looks better, mm -hmm. exactly. And yes. it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now, another great thing that you can do to encourage birds to come and be in your garden is to provide a water source for them. Obviously, they, like every creature on this earth, they need to drink water. Um, but they also, of course, love to bathe. And who doesn't love to watch birds have an bath? Exactly. So I think that's, so that's when it comes in quite naturally where you put uh, a bird mm -hmm. feeder or a bird uh, yeah. bath. Because mm -hmm. first of all, where you can see it, that's uh, always a nice little thing little to sit in feature, your, yeah. uh, uh, at your coffee table or something and you can see them. Mm -hmm. But also for the birds, I mean, it has to be easy for them to land, mm -hmm. possibly not right next to a bush where a predator could sit in there waiting for them mm -hmm. to land and then they Mm -hmm. you know jump out and get them so right. uh, maybe more towards a rose bush or something mm -hmm. because roses have aphids mm -hmm. so you at the same time give them some foods a cat wouldn't necessarily sit in a rose bush and no. wait for them so for sure you know just take your common sense and and give them what they need sunshine they obviously like sunshine right. because they can bathe and you know just what you, you would know, the put the kids is, pool basically yeah you have to think <laughs> in a bird's in a bird's mind they're flying up above if they can actually see from above that that water source then they're they're more likely to mm -hmm. come to it mm -hmm. and especially if it makes a sound so if you could have running water like a fountain of some sort yeah that's also very attractive to them and once they found it trust me they will tell their little birdie friends <laughs> uh, and it's always great to, to, to yeah. watch them so if you don't have a fountain make sure you do change the water regularly it's a good thing just to give them clean fresh water that's as you said closer to taller trees so that if something does happen they can quickly fly away exactly. and feel safe. And you can also put the, like if you have a, a plate or something put some gravel or maybe some uh, marbles, marbles or something. First yes. of all they look nice and shiny and make look make it look like bubbles are in there mm -hmm. but it also when smaller um, uh, bees or something come and land they have mm -hmm. something to land on and still drink and fly off. Sure. So give them a exactly. little bit of a stop there. So that's sort of the first part about attracting birds to your garden, well the second of course is by planting plants that will provide them with some kind of a food source. And we actually, or I actually, put together just a, <laughs> just me, well actually no, it's always a collaborative effort, but I attached my name to it this season, and that's the Bird Friendly Garden Collection. And in this collection 
are all plants that are very attractive to birds, but quite frankly, they're also attractive to us. It's exactly. a very nice collection just on yeah. its own, with or without the birds. Um, the first one that I want to talk about in the collection is the Cornus canadensis. A favorite anyways. Yes, a favorite. <laughs> it's a very, very hardy plant. It's a low grower and it produces the most beautiful dogwood-like white blooms. It's very, very pretty, but it's also very attractive mm -hmm. for the birds. Exactly, because it has beautiful high-fed red berries on yes. it. Mm -hmm. You know, and canadensis, native to Canada, mm -hmm. already attractive to us because that makes it a, quite a nice, uh, tough and hardy plant. Yes, yes. exactly. Now, the other uh, one that actually is interesting, it's also tough and hardy, is the Baptisia Astralis, which is known as wild blue indigo. Mm -hmm. And it is a very long-lived, tufted plant, but it, it looks great. It's such a pretty plant as well. And yeah, that's totally. what I mean, it kind of does double duty. Du double duty, yeah. I remember it's uh, seeing it in, in a nice bush the first time we had one of those garden tours mm -hmm. um, and communities and blooms at the mm -hmm. time. And uh, I just loved it. It was just a big, huge bush. And after the flowers are gone, the bush kind of stays the same shape, mm -hmm. but it turns brown and it is full of seed heads for, right. for the birds, for, Perfect the birds. For, for a nice kind of a structural mm -hmm. looking plants in the fall and in the winter for us, for the garden, right. and it, it does the duty for the birds. Exactly. Now the other one that's in the collection is the Solidago Super, and this one too does double duty, actually does triple duty. Yes. It's, it's beautiful, it's a beautiful golden raw, that's the common name, golden raw, beautiful yellow flowers, so it's very attractive to look at. But when it's in bloom, the bees and butterflies will be very attracted to it because of the pollen and the nectar that they can get from these blooms. But then once the flowers are spent, that's when the birds move in and they have their go at this plant, which produces beautiful seeds for them to eat. So it really is uh, a triple header, as they say. And it looks good. Mm -hmm. And it's a cut flower. Yeah. And it lasts long. Oh and, my gosh. And, 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 and. So, and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, and then of course the Rubecchia Herbst Sonne, mm -hmm. which is Herbst and Sonne, German words, which is fall sunshine. Right. So it's a lovely plant with a nice little Mm -hmm. What is it called? Like it's in like the middle, a, like the it's is like, it's a seed head. Yeah, it's a seed <laughs> head. It's a yeah, seed head it's the center of the flower. Exactly. Baskety, mm -hmm. and it's beautiful yellow, and it's, it really is like a little sunshine. And because it uh, plants mm -hmm. uh, or blooms a little bit later mm -hmm. in the in the fall or yeah. into the fall, uh, it's a wonderful plant mm -hmm. to have in your garden, not just for the birds, but also for your own fall garden. Right, and it attracts one of my favorite birds, which are the chickadees. Oh, mm -hmm. I just love those. You know, chickadee dee dee. <laughs> I, they they are so cute, aren't they? And oh, if you've never seen a little baby chickadee they're even cuter um, so <laughs> yes they love the Rubecchia herbst sonnet which is a, a beautiful plant and the last in the collection is the echinacea purpurea magnus oh. we all love a cone yeah. flower it's your your standard cone flower but when we say standard sounds kind of boring well it's not it is so pretty one of the longest blooming perennial plants that you can ever grow in your garden, blooming in late summer or, you know, depending on the weather, could even be in midsummer, but carries through to the fall. It's absolutely wonderful and an excellent food source, especially in the fall. Bees love it and the birds love it too. Yeah, so, it's a very sturdy plant. So, mm -hmm. you know, when you leave them, uh, I, th I think they look cool, even yeah. without the petals on when they are gone, because it, that, that cone shape, it's, ju it's just almost like a flower is left yeah. still in the, in the fall. And very, winter. very cool, mm -hmm. yeah. So remember that bird-friendly garden collection, if you want to attract birds to your garden or if you're just simply interested in those plants that are in that collection, you can order that at botanist.com. Now, if you are a regular Garden Club viewer, you know that we're going to be asking a question now, and uh, we're gonna give away some prizes. So our question this week is, which plant produces berries? Hmm. We did mention it. We did. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so send your answer to that question to gardenclub at botanis.com. And tomorrow, we will be doing a random draw of all the correct entries and what are they going to win? We have three winners mm -hmm. and each gets a $10 Botanis gift card. Excellent. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, you could use that towards the collection or put it in your pocket and save it for a sunnier day and spend it whenever you want at Botanis. We hope that uh, you enjoy watching our videos. You can view them on our website at Botanis.com or on our YouTube channel. And we would ask if you do watch on YouTube, please subscribe, make sure you like it, and turn on the notifications. That means that whenever a new video comes up from the Botanist Garden Club, you will be notified and you'll be one of the first to get to watch. 
Exactly. And okay. of course, we always send our emails out, so you will know. Anyways, just um, sign up for our newsletter. Exactly. Well, thank you very much for watching today. We hope that you are enjoying a wonderful spring, and we look forward to seeing you next week in the Botanist Garden Club. Until then, take care. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.